Hello everyone, Marco Cipetta for Hot Hardware here, sitting next to AMD's brand new Radeon RX 7900 XT and 7900 XTX. These cards are due to launch really soon and I have been dying to show them to you. So what do you say we open these boxes and check them out together? The first graphics card in AMD's new lineup that's due to hit store shelves relatively soon is the brand new beautiful black and red Radeon HD 7950. Oh, wait a second. Wrong decade. Okay, I was just having a little bit of fun with you. Unfortunately, I'm old enough to still have cards like the Radeon HD 7950 sitting around in the lab. But the first two new graphics cards in AMD's Radeon RX 7000 series will be the flagship Radeon RX 7900 XTX and the 7900 XT. Both of these cards are due to launch next week. Now, full disclosure, this is not review day. I can't show you the cards in action or show you any benchmarks just yet, but I can check out the cards and show you what the retail experience will be like. So let's get right to it. Both the new Radeon RX 7900 XTX and 7900 XT ship in similar boxes with similar graphics. So I'll just open up the flagship here. They both present exactly the same as you open them up. So I've taken the liberty of cutting the security seal. And what you'll notice with this box, it's a pretty cool trick. As you open the lid, the card gets propped up and presented to you front and center. There she is. There's the brand new 7900 XTX. And right at the top of the lid, pretty cool, it says, welcome to the red team. At first glance, the Radeon RX 7900 XTX and 7900 XT, they look similar and they have many of the same design cues, but the cards are actually quite different. So obviously they're based on the same new architecture. They're both based on RDNA 3 and they both feature technically the same GPU. Now that GPU has a five nanometer graphics compute die, AMD calls it a GCD, and that's flanked by six memory cache dies or MCDs. Now the graphics compute die is built at five nanometer and the MCDs are built at six nanometer. So what should we expect from these GPUs? Well, quite a bit actually. So AMD is calling RDNA 3 their most advanced GPU architecture to date. And now obviously that makes sense considering this is the latest and greatest, but the cards do have a lot to offer. So AMD is claiming up to 15% higher frequencies with 54% higher per, per watt. Now, of course, peak performance is also increased. On the flagship 7900 XTX, AMD is claiming up to 61 teraflops of compute performance and 2.7x peak bandwidth. The GPU at the heart of the cards also features the latest AMD RDNA 3 unified compute units, which offer 2x the instructions per clock, plus vastly updated RT cores and AI engines, plus there's new display and media engines on board too, with support for DisplayPort 2.1 and AV1 encoding. As far as their specs go, the flagship Radeon RX 7900 XTX at the bottom here, this guy is going to be equipped with 96 of those unified RDNA 3 compute units, and it'll have an average game clock of about 2.3 gigahertz, and it's got 24 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory on board linked to the GPU via a 384-bit memory interface. Now, this guy's got a board power of 355 watts. Now, one step down the ladder, that's the 7900 XT, this guy up here. This one's going to have 84 compute units with an average game clock around 2 gigahertz and 20 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory linked via a 320-bit memory interface. And the board power on this guy is just north of 300 watts. Now, during their initial presentation, it was shown as 300 watts even, but AMD has upped that spec just a bit. Aesthetically speaking, the Radeon RX 7900 XT and 7900 XTX, they do look very similar, but there are some physical differences between the cards in addition to the spec differences. So they both have this, you know, nice angular fan shroud with a similar design, and they both have triple axial fans but the XTX is slightly larger. It's got a larger cooler on board that's a little bit taller, a little bit wider this way, and a little bit wider this way. Switching to a different angle for a second, you can see a couple of the physical differences a little bit better. So the XTX, the guy up top here, is a little longer, and you can see, you know, it's just a little bit taller. It's about finger's height right there. So how do the Radeon RX 7900 XTX's dimension compare to a GeForce RTX 40 series card? Well, let's find out. 
So this is a GeForce RTX 4090, and as you can see, it's bigger in every dimension. It's wider, it's longer, it's taller. Now, also keep in mind that the GeForce RTX 4080, at least the Founders Edition, has the same exact dimensions as this guy. So AMD's cards are definitely smaller this round, at least in terms of the reference cards from the two companies. There's some interesting stuff to see if we take a quick tour around the card. So on the case bracket here, you'll notice there's no venting, it's just ports and outputs. So there's a full-size display port here, a USB-C port slash display port here, another full-size display port, and an HDMI output. Along the top edge of the card, you can see the large heatsink fin stack here. It's all anodized black, except for this very cool red stripe. And you can also see the power connector. So both the 7900XTX and 7900XT, they have a pair of PCI Express 8-pin connectors, the typical connectors we've seen for many years, not the newer 12-volt high power connector that's on NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 40 series. If we flip the card to the bottom, you can see more of that fin stack there with just a cutout in this section for the lighting connectors and power connectors for the fans. There's not much to see on the back except for a quartet of screw holes for additional mounting hardware should you need it. Now looking at the front of the card, you can see the triple axial fans and you'll also note these translucent sections in the shroud and along the edge here. Those are actually lighted along with the Radeon logo. And the back of the cards has a full coverage plate that is metal to aid with rigidity and cooling. And what about performance, you ask? Well, we can't show you any benchmarks just yet, but AMD is targeting GeForce RTX 4080 class performance with these cards, depending on the game and workload. Though we should note that AMD will be doing it at lower price points. The 7900 XTX will arrive at $999, and the 7900 XT at $899. And with that, I think we'll bring this video to a close. Uh, we hope you dug this quick look at the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT and 7900 XTX. If you're eager for more, don't sweat it. Full reviews will be live early next week. And if you did like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and do us a solid and tick that reminder bell. And of course, hit hothardware.com for tons of the latest tech news and reviews. Once again, this is Marco Cipetta. Thanks for hanging out with us.